Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In today's video, we're going to do a little bit more load development with our Savage 110 BA Stealth Chamberlain 338 Lapua Magnum. We're going to be using the Hornady 230 grain ELDX as well as Alliance Reloader 26. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of you here make our group smaller, Start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you can get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. To make sure I don't forget to cover it, we'll cover it right from the beginning. Our test platform for today is our Savage 110 BA Stealth Chamberlain 338 Lapua Magnum. This is very close to the stock configuration in which the rifle came in. The only real changes that we've made was actually adding the Magpul PRS stock changing our grip, and then adding our scope. Our scope is a SWFA fixed 20 power scope, mil mil. It's currently wearing 30 millimeter SWFA scope rings, as well as SWFA bubble level. In case you're wondering, this is the factory trigger, as well as the factory brake that comes on the rifle. It has been a little while since we've posted any videos on our 338 Lapua Magnum, but if you've been paying attention this whole time, you'll know that we've actually ran some initial loads to fire from our brass. We're now just starting to get some velocity curves to dig a little deeper into our load development. We've ran into some bumps along the way, but nothing we can't overcome. And so today we're going to be doing a little bit more workup on the velocity nodes. So basically for today's video, we're actually be doing some velocity and pressure testing with our 338 Lapua Magnum. We are using the 230 grain ELDX by Hornady. Alliance Reloader 26 is the powder that we chose. And basically we're just gonna fire 10 rounds at varying charge weights to see where we find pressure in our rifle, as well as see if we find any velocity nodes along the way. Our actual load source for today is actually straight out of the Hornady manual. They do have 225 grain load data, and this is essentially what we're using. They don't specifically list this 230 grain ELDX, but figuring it's close enough and Hornady is usually relatively conservative with their load data, I figured this would be our best start to this project. Somewhere around our starting charge of 91 grains, Hornady is predicting a velocity of a, a ballpark of 2,900 feet per second, and 95.5 grains, we're going to get somewhere around 3,100 feet per second. Slight differences in what we're shooting, that low data is actually based on Hornady Brass and Fed 215 primers. Also of note, the velocities they are quoting are out of a 27 inch barrel. Now as the loads we're actually going to test today, we'll be using our Lapua Brass. This is its second firing, it's just been fire formed. We've actually annealed it, full length sized it, and we've set our neck tension with our Sinclair Mandrel die at two thousandths. The projectile is the Hornady 203 grain ELDX, the part number is 33210. The cartridge overall length that we're loading to is straight out of the manual, 3.565 inches. The primer we're using is a CCI 250 Large Rifle Magnum Primer. We've actually used it a little bit and we've had reasonable results. So our starting charge today will be at 91 grains over loader 26. We'll be loading in 0.5 increments all the way to 95.5 grains. Like I said, the cartridge overall length is 3.565 inches. In case you're interested, the CBTO on that is 2.830 inches. And the distance from the lands we're loading today is about 120 thousandths. I wouldn't necessarily recommend being as this far away from the lands. However, when we're developing our velocity nodes, I'd like to know a worst case and go from there. The shooting conditions that we did our test in are 53 degrees Fahrenheit, 28.52 inches of mercury, 84% relative humidity, and a density altitude of 1,372 feet. I've heard you guys loud and clear and you guys enjoyed the range footage, so let's go take a quick trip out to the range, shoot these shots, and then we'll come back in and discuss them. Welcome back. I hope everyone enjoyed that. Not a ton to discuss based on the groups. If you're interested, the overall group size was 2.878 MOA. Paying attention to which shots go in what hole. If you look, shots three through five are basically right in that same hole. I didn't do a measurement on that. If our velocity node was somewhere around there, it would certainly be interesting. One thing I will let you guys in on, somewhere along this range trip, I finally did discover that again, one more time, the screws were backing out of my rail. I think going forward, I figured out how to resolve this issue, but I will do another video completely on that. I don't want to distract from that at this time. 
just know it is possible our groups could have been better than they are. And in fact, when we get to a couple other loads, when I found it, tighten everything down, we came right back right to an MOA running one of these 10 shot strings. But it really wasn't our luck today, but this was the first group of the day we shot, so I don't know. Maybe shots three through five being the same hole wasn't really a fluke. What we really came today was develop our velocity graph, and so let's put that on the screen. As you can see, starting out at 91 grains, we achieved 29.52 feet per second and crept all the way up at 95.5 grains to 3,129 feet per second. So basically we lined up very well with our low data's prediction for where we were to end up today, maybe slightly faster, certainly uh, in my opinion, in the range of error. Now as far as nodes are concerned, maybe not the most interesting set at our 91 and 91.5 grain load, the same identical velocity. Again, same repeat thing around the 92 to 92.5 arena there at 2980. There was really nothing else here that blatantly stuck out at me. I wonder if this would be one of the cases where if we would have had a few more data points along the way, we would have had more meaningful data to discuss. There might be a slight change in velocity drop right between the 93.5 and 94 grain load, seeing as we only climbed 14 feet per second there, and in that next node bumped right up another 39 feet per second. But without some more serious load development, we really don't know. Overall, we lined up pretty well with our load data as far as velocity was concerned. Frankly, I think we're just going to have to shoot some groups at some varying ranges and see if we can find anything if we decide this 230 grain ELDX is worth pursuing. I have no doubt this thing could take some serious game. Not sure it's what I'll end up using it for, but one of the few projectiles that they actually sell by the 100 for the 338 caliber, I figured we'd give it a whirl and see how it went. Next time we might move a little closer to the lands. I'm not sure being 120 thousands back is going to do us any good, but we'll know we're going to be within safe pressure ranges and we can do some accuracy tuning should we actually get everything tied down and working well. So we talked about velocity and predicted low data. Let's take a look at for pressure and let's take a look at our brass. As you guys can see the brass starting at the 91 grains all the way up to 95.5. Really nothing here that I'm concerned about. I'll also put that factory herders round there for reference. That is a 250 grain Sierra Match King load. Just to give you any idea what a factory load would look like. I honestly think, though I'm sure it's not the same primer, I honestly think that the factory load primer looks more flattened than these are. Pressure is really not a concern with this load to me whatsoever. But draw your own conclusions. Going forward, if we tried to pursue this any further, I think that we'll be testing a little closer to the lands, maybe just for fun to see if we can find a good node at that 91 to 91.5 grain level, just to see if we can find a low extreme spread standard deviation load. Not sure 2950 is where this projectile is very exciting, but if it's predictable, I guess that's better than nothing. And even if you're not interested in loading 338 Lapua Magnum, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions about the video, please put those in the comment section below. If you want to keep up with this project, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.